This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. He decided to give the case to Detective Monique Dahl, a third-generation cop, 35 years old, working her first day in homicide. Dahl had spent 10 years in narcotics, four of those undercover with the DEA. She had a lot to recommend her. Dahl stood out, too, as one of the most glamorous officers in Anchorage. She looked like her name, blonde and beautiful, though she answered to the androgynous nickname Mickey. She was married to another star at APD, the handsome Justin Dahl, and they were something of a local power couple. So the sergeant told Dahl, Your lead on this. Suspicious circumstance, he called it. Across town, FBI Special Agent Steve Payne was tying up a drug case when a friend at the police department called. This is common practice in Anchorage, a big city that runs like a small town. Cops, FBI agents, defense lawyers, prosecutors, judges, everyone knows everyone. It is the paradox of being Alaskan. This state is home to rugged individualists who nonetheless know there will come a time, amid the cold, unpitying winters, when they will need help. Payne was told that an 18-year-old girl had disappeared early the night before, and had sent some angry texts to her boyfriend. One emerging theory had Samantha stealing the day's take to fund a day or two off on her own. Happened in Anchorage all the time. Yet Payne wasn't so sure. Planning to disappear requires long-range strategy and sophistication. Samantha seemed like a young girl with very little money. Payne was a regular at these roadside coffee kiosks and could only guess how little the baristas were paid. These young girls, who often worked alone, were made to wear bikinis in the summer. It was not an easy life. Besides, where would a teenage girl go by herself on a dark and freezing Wednesday night? The weather had been brutal, just over thirty degrees, snow covering the ground. Samantha didn't have her pickup truck that night. Her boyfriend Dwayne did. Anchorage isn't a walkable city. Samantha just wandering off, alone and on foot, made no sense. If she had gone to a friend's house, as she'd told Dwayne in text last night, Chances were the police would already have found her. He offered to help. We've got enough people, came the reply. We think we know what this is. Payne hung up. This didn't sit right. As he well knew, the first rule of any investigation was to keep an open mind. You didn't try to fit a personal theory to a possible crime. He had heard that the police never even taped off the kiosk earlier that morning, when Samantha was reported missing, and her fellow barista then spent the morning serving customers. If the kiosk was in fact a crime scene, it had already been contaminated. Unbelievable, Payne thought. This was basic stuff, knowing that the first hours of an investigation are everything, presenting as they do the freshest leads, the most telling witness interviews. Crucially, investigators themselves are at their most curious and engaged, confronting a brand new mystery with brand new players. This sets the tone for everything to come. With missing people, especially a child, and Payne considered Samantha a child, these earliest moments, handled correctly, will give investigators the best chance of finding them alive and well. He didn't want to overstep but he couldn't help himself. He called APD, leaving messages, waiting all afternoon for a reply. Finally, at eight o'clock that night, Payne's phone rang. It was Detective Dahl. Some things have changed, she said. Payne made the twelve-minute drive from the FBI's Anchorage field office over to APD. He was six years older than Dahl and had been with the Bureau for sixteen years born and raised in Anchorage, a rarity. Most folks who live here, like Dahl, are expats from the lower 48. Payne understood the psyche of the city. He understood the bias police could have when it comes to Anchorage's poor and troubled, the lost causes. He didn't want to see Samantha dismissed. Payne's outward appearance gave little hint of his mettle. No one would ever guess he was a special agent, 
who had worked drugs and violent crime his whole career. Small features, slight frame. He looked like an accountant 